Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the program. My name is William Hemsworth. It's a pleasure to be with you again today. Honored to have my guest. Uh, he's been on a couple times. Always a pleasure to have him on. He has so many great things to talk about. He's the founder of freedomcoaching.net. Helps men overcome porn addiction. And it's just a fantastic ministry he's doing. So I'm honored to have him on. Steve McCorney. Steve, how are you doing today? I'm blessed, brother. William, it's an honor to celebrate with you uh, this Easter season, so where Christ is risen and risen from the dead, truly. Amen. Such a great time of year, not only because of the resurrection, which is enough in itself, but I love I love seeing all the new people coming into the church. It's just so exciting to see and Amen. love to see their passion. It's it's so fun. So so what have you been up to since last time we, we spoke? It's been a few months, and it, you've been, it has been pretty been. busy. Man, it's been it's been crazy. The, the what, what God has done and blessed us, and, and for those who are unaware, freedom coaching is that which we work with those uh, men and women who are dealing with a compulsion or an attachment to pornified images, uh, lustful lifestyles, to help break them of that and to do it in a permanent way, and which is a, a total blessing. And God, over the past twelve months, has brought on our team four. So I'm no longer I'm not I'm not I'm not a lone wolf here anymore. I'm, there are four other coaches working with us. There's Hopefully, two more on the way, um, and right. we've been we've been developing our own podcast. We've have a, a twelve part series uh, called "Redeeming Our Vision," um, which you can find at redeemingourvision.com. is uh, has been released after about three months worth of work, uh, three years worth of work. So it's been a total blessing. Um, so yeah, so uh, let's uh, let's share a little bit about it. All right. So the twelve part series. What is it? What does it entail? Sure. So what this is, 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 is basically walking us through um, the, the truth about the pornified culture that we live in. Live in. And the idea is that you know, we, we are surrounded in what we call the septic tank, and we're all swimming in it. And sadly, many people are unaware of it, right? Now, if you're coming from the, the Catholic side, I think some people know, are aware to a degree. But I always like to ask, you know, how many homilies have you ever heard on pornography? How many of us have really examined what pornography is doing in our lives? So here in this in the twelve part series, we really get, go go deep into some of the issues of it. But then we start to unveil, you know, what is God's plan for our life? How do we find substantial, significant answers to this? And I think, uh, you know, of those who are aware of the problem, very few are aware of how to, what do we actually do about it to actually solve the problem. And I think this the series opens a gateway to really having that discussion about substantial answers to this. So there's uh, many of them are in that series and it opens up for a wider discussion um, that there's much more we can do so that we can live the life God is calling us to live. Right. So is it meant to be like in a group setting or individual? What's that like? Good question. So uh, certainly, so actually, there's it's multi-tiered for those who are interested. So certainly, you can go and view this as as individuals, um, but it's also designed especially for parishes and diocesan. There's a parish and diocesan license um, because we want to make sure that we can get this access to as wide an audience as possible. And a lot of it's to start the conversation. Let's so it makes an easy way to be able to discuss it. So, and then from here, like the, the title is redeeming our vision. And the idea is we're all blind. We've all grown blind, especially from sin, but especially in the, in the culture, which we live, that does not help us to see one another in truth. And it's, and especially through the idea that eroticized images, that's the only vision we have for life that's presented to us in many of the media forms. And we want to say that the church has a profound vision for love and life that really actually satisfies. And so when you tap people into and start having them really examine to question the reality that's presented in front of us, is this the way that life was meant to be? And I think if we're honest, no, which then begs the question, the ache, the hurt that we feel in our heart points us to something more. And I, and, and through this series, I want to help people to get in touch with the more and then pursue that with their whole lives. And it, and what we've seen through this series is just transformation. And I, I just, one of the, one of the guys who was on the, um, in the filming of it, he was working the audio and um, he was listening to this and he pulled me aside, aside uh, at the, towards the, one of the breaks and he said, this is really powerful stuff. And the more that I got to talk to him, I found out that he worked on a, um, on a ship out in the Mediterranean. Um, he would, cause he was from that area 
And um, so we can say he was a seaman, pardon the pun. And he, uh, along with 12 or 15 other guys, when they were on breaks, what they all did, they all pulled out their phones and were looking at porn. Okay. So this is so very much epidemic of, of the culture and especially, you know, various, various places where people are isolated here. So we want to help to draw them into a deeper reality that God has much more for you. And so we want to invite them to come to learn what that is and to begin to live it. Okay. So how does that tie into your book? Cause I know your yeah. book is, your book is very powerful as well. You know, overcome, you know, overcoming a pornified culture and I, I, just, I love that title because it speaks volumes. How does that tie in? Sure. So good question, William. Uh, so the book itself is is called Redeemed Vision, Setting Redeemed the Blind vision. Free from the Pornified Culture. So yeah. you got Redeemed Visions, the book Redeeming Our Vision is the series. So um, the, the, book, the, the book is a 460-page well worth um, tome, shall we say. It's well worth reading. Uh, it's Definitely. about 14 years worth of research. And for those who really want to go deep, um, it, 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 please do please pick it up because it, it's well worth the read. But again, we're a very visual culture, right? And we're, and many people are, uh, you know, finding, can I just watch something? Isn't there something I could just watch? Here's where we have, we've provided the option okay. for that. And, and I want to make it very clear though, the series does not replace the book because there are so many other concepts in the book that just, there's no possible way we can get to all of them. So they, they're really going to work hand in hand in there. And if I can get my act together, there will be a study guide to go along with redeeming our vision. So stay tuned for that. And if you're in, in the praying mode, then I request your prayers on that. Oh, definitely. And with everything you have going on, we'll definitely keep you yeah. in prayer with that. So definitely pick up both of those because it's something our culture needs, especially well in times like this with everyone on lockdown. Like you said, those phones are so handy. And just offhand, Steve, and I know it's how how much has porn consumption gone up since the pandemic started? Do you have, so, have any idea? Yeah, no, it's 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 obviously has gone up. The a couple of the stats that I saw, and this was very early, one of the early articles. I think it was from July. This is just one area of the globe, and they found in um, it was I believe it was um, in, in I think near Malaysia or um, actually t- yeah two major things. So you got Mal- I think it's Malaysia or um, it's right around that area. They found that t- that pornography consumption actually child pornography had gone up two hundred sixty seven percent. Okay, and this is a, a huge area it, from I think it was uh, about March through June through May of that. So we're talking two months worth had gone up. And then I do know operate. This is just the other um, about a week or so ago. Operation Underground Railroad, which is headed by Tim Ballard and his team, which has a lot of work in breaking down uh, education on, on sex trafficking, but also going into bust up sex trafficking rings, foreign and domestic. And they in Taiwan. They found the single largest trove of it that they've ever, and they've been doing this this work for five, six years now, I believe, um, of breaking down. Uh, they found uh, the single largest trove of of child pornography images. Okay, so this issue, if if we're if we're paying attention, is not going away anytime soon, especially with all the things that are coming out. I think 2020, and you know, I, I try to look at this from God's perspective. 2020 has been um, a, a profound year of revealing of God helping us to begin to see things, realize things aren't, uh, or to quote the prophet, um, you know, Stephen Tyler of Aerosmith, right? Um, there's something wrong with the world today. We don't know what it is. Uh, there's something wrong with our eyes. Um, that we're seeing things that that aren't God's. And, we, and God knows it's not his. I'm paraphrasing there, right? So we're living on the edge. Sorry if anybody didn't know the, the quote from that. And from this, and I could scream it out, but I want to have your listeners stay with us, William. So within this here, <laughs> um, like it's, it's been a profound opening. We've been finding that a ton of, a ton of celebrities have been caught into a lot of this lifestyle called kind of child trafficking, a lot yeah. of more, much more darker stuff with things, persons like Jeffrey Epstein and a lot of major Hollywood players here. So this is a huge player. And, and, and especially, obviously it's pushed by, pushed by, pushed by the Hollywood elites in their movies, things like that. But then obviously we're seeing this in movies, magazines, obviously on the internet. Um, and, and sadly caught right in the middle. And we mentioned child trafficking. 
Um, so many kids are are getting trapped in the middle, of just being on the phones, being isolated, having to do Zoom calls um, for for school, things like that. Their parents have to work, so they're left alone on a screen for eight, ten hours a day. Well, they're going to get bored and they're going to start surfing. And then you have horrific things like um, one thing that happened at our school um, is there's uh, a, a girl ran away from home. Uh, went out about two and a half hours away and I'm not going to mention uh, locations for sure, for sure. the uh, situation and uh, two and a half hours away mom comes and gets gets daughter she runs away again comes with comes to live with her grandma only to find that it was mom running a trafficking ring of which her um, daughter is a part of Okay. This is at our. This is at my front door. This is at our happen has as the a mom of somebody at our school. And we're at a very good school, and we're very thankful for it. It's a public charter school. So, like to think this stuff is somewhere else. We have to wake up to the reality, and then the beauty of it that that there's 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 an answer to this. There's an answer to these issues here. We don't have to lament and throw up our hands and say. It's all hell in a handbasket. No, there's a lot of brokenness. But remember, this, we're an Easter people. We believe in redemption. We believe that God can redeem everything, and we need to enter into that plan. Right. Now, Steve, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about was theology of the body, because it, it's a very important thing. I know a lot of Catholics have heard about it, maybe don't know exactly what it is. So maybe yeah. what is it, and how does how does porn undermine that? Sure. Great, great question. So n- n- not a softball question, but we'll it's go. A big, there. It's a big one. <laughs> it's, a, it's a big question, right? And and I remember when I first was studying this, I discovered this back in 2002, 2004. It still was, I estimate it's about 4% of Catholics knew about it. And I still think we're, we still are scratching the surface. Okay. And more and more people hear about this, but um, they're still trying to, you know, what is all of this? So in a, on a basic level, it's a series of public, 129 public audiences or public short talks that jo- St. John Paul the Great gave between 1979 and 1984. Um, when he was in Rome, took a year off the year of the family, which was 1981, and then also in recovery from the assassination attempt. And what this is, nothing more, is a teaching on the very meaning of life. And if you look around our culture, we want meaning. People are crying out. And either we're going to go, like uh, recently, the I think the, the rapper DMX, I was listening to another pod, podcast, um, he recently overdosed. And, and to those who, in the, who, are, who are big in the, the rap community, um, this is a huge, huge blow. But if you go in and you investigate a lot of his music, it's, it's it, it, a lot of the, it can be described as very violent, very sexually permissive, permissive. Um, but it's, it's, it's this crying out and we're seeing this in a lot of the popular, popular music just to stay there, this crying out for meaning. Cause if we don't have genuine meaning in our life, um, then we're going to think that life is meaningless and just take one, one analogy, William, and then I'll be silent. So you can ask a follow up and we'll, we'll go into pornography in a second. Um, sure. is like it's, our world says that there is no God. And thus, we didn't come from anywhere, right? And we're becoming much more, not just in, not just a post-Christian era, but an anti-Catholic era, right? Where basically the idea that anybody who follows traditional Catholicism or, or even traditional Christianity is uh, a threat to um, a threat to a person's happiness, right? And so the, the belief in teaching is there's no God. And thus, we're not, we didn't come from anywhere. And, and on the other end is, when we die, our bodies are simply going to rot, and thus we're not going anywhere. And uh, if you don't know where you came from or where you're going, where are you? You're lost. And so then you have in the middle here, right, we, uh, of all, we can have find all these various different pursuits. One of those, for instance, is that, uh, well, drugs, drug, sex, and rock and roll, right? Pornography being one of those, right? All these little pursuits here. But if, if it's A, if it's not in accord with our dignity as human beings, and B, it's not tethered to eternal meaning, or we would say eternal truth, then what happens here, it becomes meaningless. The pursuit becomes meaningless. And because I've identified myself with that pursuit, and that's what happens in many cases, we get wrapped up in, in all these little things, then we find ourselves feeling meaningless, ourselves. And then this is a quick, a quick road down to feeling hopeless and despair. And, and now we get into a culture that is very much looking like wanting to just end it all, right? The suicide cults and, and wanting to seek out, you know, um, euthanasia uh, for old and also not so old. So this recovery of meaning is critically needed. And I think this is especially why 
this great grace of theology of the body needs to be, I would say, arguably reintroduced to the church in many, many ways. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. And you said something important, you know, there's an attack on, well, anti-Catholicism. And recently the Pope, you know, reaffirmed Catholic teaching and there's a big uproar on on the left side of things. But more than that, if there's no meaning, if we die and it's just, we're just rotting away, what's the worth to us? Yeah, what does it matter? What, what's, the, what's the meaning? So what's the meaning of life at that point? Then I guess, yeah. okay. Wow. I mean, what is the powerful? I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, and, and that's that's the whole thing. We look at the horror of our lives, and, and we find that life has no meaning. So, and and so, like, we, and that's very dark. But let's flip it around. And we want to say there's a great light here. So, the best way I can describe it is the fulcrum of history, not a what, but a who. The fulcrum is the linchpin of history. Okay, it's been said through through theologians throughout the centuries that the the cross. We oftentimes look at history through a, a linear lens. Mm -hmm. And what we want to say is we want to start looking through a circular lens, through the that the, the cross itself is what gives the ultimate meaning to life in perspective here. And what Jesus Christ does is he points us back to the beginning. And that's where theology of the body kicks off to discover what was life like in the beginning. We were created by God. We're good. We're beautiful. We are fallen, but we are redeemed and we are bound for glory in and through our body. And William, I think this whole discussion about the body is critically important, right? Just take the issue of same-sex attraction. Just take that, that whole, this whole hullabaloo that certain, um, I would say, false theologians are pushing in the church, especially we're finding in the German, in, in many in the, in the hierarchy of the German church, right. uh, German Catholic church, to say that same-sex um Saying uh, that that this that we should bless same sex unions, right? And the Pope comes out and affirms a traditional Catholic teaching. And I think like there's a whole lot to unpack there, and we can certainly go there if we want. But but in here is this question: is what is the meaning of the body? Does the body have intrinsic meaning? The fact that we're create that, that we see two halves of humanity created either created either male or female. That in certain places in Canada, if I'm Canada saying that publicly, I could be thrown in jail for that, right? And this is this is just what we want to say is reality. But, but the, the issue is we've reduced our body down to mere feeling. So if I don't feel yeah. what I what I look like in the mirror, then I need to change it. So and 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 now it's not just uh, the idea that maybe something's wrong wrong. Uh, the idea is. Maybe something's wrong in, in, in a person's heart and head. Maybe that's what's going on here. Instead, the argument goes, well, if that internal stuff, what you feel is reality, so let's change the phys physicality. And, and these have profound implications, profound answers, right? Whereas, you know, we, we started this conversation talking about pornography, right? Well, mm -hmm. I like to say that the pornified culture is, is, um, is, is pursuing and is stalking our children, it is the transgender movement to a very real degree is hunting our children to say that basically what you're feeling is your reality. And from here, um, then you have to change it. So we have, we have parents who are going along with doctors, um, doc doctors pursuits to basically mutilate the bodies of their children, these puberty blockers. And if they're made permanent, there's permanent sterility. And, and remember, adolescence is a confusing time. It's a painful, yeah. painful time. But what we find is those, especially with same-sex attraction, um, studies have shown a vast majority of those children who experience same-sex attraction, by the time they're mid-20s, those, those attractions kind of work themselves out. But if we start messing with hormones, very early on, we're talking 11, 10 years of age, nine years of age, I've seen, seen, seen some articles on things. Those are irreversible. And then somebody like a person like um, Walt Heyer, which I, I recommend everyone take a look at, a man who uh, was unhappy being born as a man, try, um, had a quote unquote sex change as a woman. Um, and then he, he was educated in Berkeley. Berkeley is no, uh, no, no fan of, of Catholicism, I would say. Um, right. But in his, in his studies and things like that, finding um, and just being educated on this, those who experience this have many mental disorders. And doesn't mean the person's bad. I want to make that very clear to yeah. those who are hearing this, right? Those who have 
weaknesses or brokenness of uh, hurt, uh, pains in mind does not mean that you itself are bad. It just means we're made for healing. We're made for wholeness. But if we are, but our, our culture wants to stay, th- say that's the way you're born. That's the way you need to to live this out. Um, and that's your way to happiness. But when, but more and more people are stepping up and saying, I'm not, I'm not happy in this lifestyle, but I've done this damage to my body and I don't know how to get out of this. And all I want to bring this, uh, bring this full circle, William, that all of these come back to ironically back to pornography. Now you said something a minute ago, you talked about feelings and how that seems to have become the barometer of truth. Mm-hmm. Well, if that's the barometer of truth, then there's really no truth. Am I right? No. Well, my truth is your truth, and your truth is well, <laughs> your truth is your truth. My <laughs> truth is my truth, and as long as you don't get in the way, then we'll be fine, right? Well, what yeah. if my what if my truth says that your truth is a lie? Well, then let's <laughs> just take a Planned Parenthood approach and kill you, right? I mean, yeah. is that is that not what it is, right? And that and that is, that what I that's again we're we're hitting on a whole the whole we're kind of shotgunning a lot of issues here this morning. <laughs> Thank you. So, like think about it, like and, and it like, wasn't the intention, but it just happened to work out that way. <laughs> spirit, right? I mean, you you admitted here like we couldn't get this podcast started for five or six times on here. I think somebody doesn't want us talking about these things, and we need to. So, like, think about it, right? The the pornified culture says that your value is based on your sex appeal, what you can provide for me, how you can go around, uh, excite me and things like that. And if you don't have that, um, then um, I can discard you. I can devalue you. Um, I can even kill you. Is this not what we say when uh, a, you know, a woman, uh, something goes right with the, uh, the sexual act and she gets pregnant, okay? She's in a tough situation and the man says to her, just take care of it. All right. It's not because of women that abortion exists. It's because of men who don't have control over their passions. It's because of men who don't know what love is. And then you have women who buy the same lie, who, who their value is based on their sex appeal, that if they have a little too much weight here, or God forbid, I now have created space for another person, or I, I have the space and now this other person is, is here, um, the, we're going we're gonna to take what, what appears to be the simple answer. But remember, God always forgives, man sometimes forgives, nature never forgives, right? So if, if some, if, and this is there's countless stories of, of women who have regretted their abortions, of health, health issues that come from there, of breast cancer and um, of blood clots and lots and lots of different things that have come, come from this, um, the blood clots, especially from the hormonal contraceptive pill, all of this comes back to a faulty understanding of the body, that we're not seeing the body in truth, that we're created not to be used as objects. And that's precisely what the point of eye vision gives, but they were created to be loved. We're created, not, the four deepest desires of the human heart are to see and be seen, to love and be loved. And when we don't have those in our life, right, when that absence and the ache is there, and by the way, I'm married, and whenever I have an argument with my wife, I sometimes don't feel that. And she doesn't feel that, right? So every person feels that. It's a matter of though, where are we going to meet that need? So I can either go into drug, sex, and rock and roll, right? Inappropriately, or I can seek the healer. And right now during Easter is a beautiful time to go to the healer, to have him reveal what is the meaning of our body so we can live out that meaning of the body in truth. Right. So does it, you said it all goes back to porn. So this all goes back to seeing the opposite sex as an object of use then instead of for what they're created for. So I would say that's part of it, William. That's okay. really, really important. So, for, so I, I would, there's, there's probably more than two here, but let's hit on two avenues. Obviously one, what is pornography? Do pornography is training us to view the other person through the lens of use that I, that my, my, the, their purpose and value has only when they're, they satisfy that that there. And if it's, it's, once that's gone, then I can discard and replace them. Just take the idea of the Tinder, right? What's Tinder all about? Tinder is about hooking up, right? right. And Tinder's a one, one outlet for the point of my culture. So I, 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 and I've never used Tinder, so I may use the wrong language here, but from what I've heard, like swipe, swipe, unhappily married. Thank you. Or I'm swipe right. Now. Swipe right is what I hear. <laughs> is that what swipe right? Okay. I know nothing. So swipe right or, or, but if you don't like them, then you swipe left, right? Right. And they, 
and they're replaceable. Swipe left, swipe swipe left, and and it's just the whole thing that like that. Um, I once heard about a, the commentary by uh, Reed Mercer. I talk about this in chapter two of my book of that Cosmo magazine is kind of has programmed women to choose men off the menu, like uh, men like they would um, a dessert off the menu. Okay, so it's 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 on both avenues, and so that would be the one thing, right? We're dehumanizing the other, but more so. First and foremost, we're dehumanizing ourselves because we're putting ourselves in the, in the place that my value is in what I look like, my value is in what I do, right? And all of this, this, this connects with the same-sex agenda. This connects with the transgender movement. This check, uh, attached with the the uh, uh, abortion lobby. All these different aspects flow from this one issue, but many people don't see this. And whereas in truth, what what's the um, what is the, uh, how do you sum up the law from the old Testament, right? You are to love the Lord, your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and, 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 and body, shall we say, and to love your neighbor as what yourself, as yourself, as yourself. How am I supposed to love the other if I don't first love myself? And I think this is, this is one of the epidemics of our culture is a lot of people don't believe that they're lovable. They don't think they they think because of the mistakes that have happened, and 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 let's let's face it, William. How many of us are really growing up in healthy, holistic families where we have healthy, honest, nurturing conversations about human sexuality? I didn't, and I know that things have not gotten better since I've since I've grown up, right? And so from this, it's not there, and if these these aren't affirmed in our in our childhood and continuously affirmed, you go out into a world the world that doesn't care anything about you in, in many cases, then, then, then that, if we don't think there's a way to get that met in, in, in truth, that's going to really be fulfilling. That's really good with us in accord with our dignity. Then what happens is then it gets turned self. And we, and again, the whole drug, sex and rock and roll and, and whatever realm of that, of which the porn of culture pornography use is obviously an outflowing of that. Now, Steve, it sounds like this is kind of a, this is a gospel issue. Am I off base? Oh gosh, yes. No. What did Jesus Christ come? Like the, what's the good news of the gospel? Jesus Christ came to give us more rules and to make us unhappy. Right? Is that what he came for? (laughs) No. (laughs) Jesus Christ came to set us free. I came to give sight to the blind, to unleash prisoners from their chains. Paraphrasing Isaiah 61, which is the first uh, first reading that uh, public reading that Jesus does in the in um, in the synagogue where he's at right, and so um, he's come to set us free, and I think he's come to set us free from the lies in this day and age. I would say that this is the the theology of the body is the the keystone to be able to understand life, but it's also the satisfying solution for those who have grown up in this pornify culture who have come to believe that my value is simply about the what pleasure I can bring to others, which is a lie. You have a value in yourself. Every woman hearing this, your value is in who you are. are. Your body and all body parts are created not for another man or even for a baby. They're for you first and foremost. But then when we get this, when we get this dignity, then, and we're living from that place, then we are to live our bodies for others. It's a paradox, right? And this is exactly what Jesus Christ came to do. He came to seek and find the lost to heal us. All of us are wounded. And I think, especially in the church, we go to church, right? Or even right now, many of our churches are shut down because of fear and cowardice, I would say. And from this here, you are, um, what we're supposed to be hearing in church is this liberating message of liberation. But many times, the homilies are esoteric. We're not hearing this. And I would argue that many of the, the priests out there have some issue with pornography themselves. Okay, It's not every priest by any means, but it's a number. And it's a, not, a, not a, a, a small number. We work with, I think there's three priests we're currently, we have as clients right, in freedom coaching. So this is an all hands on deck issue. Um, but, but the gospel is liberation. And, the, and what, it, what the theology of the body does puts flesh on the gospel. What does it have to do with me? What does it do with my body? How does this unveil the meaning of life? And when we get this, William, William, when we get this, it's like life comes alive and hope is restored my, because meaning is restored. And it's not just meaning here on earth, which is really important, but it's also because it's pointing us to heaven. And this changes everything. 
Steve, what can you and I as individual Catholics do not only for ourselves, but to help the culture around us with these issues? Mm, good question. Besides the William Hunsberg podcast and coming on here. <laughs> no. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's a, a, a three or four point plan. Let's see how many points I come up with in this. So first is obviously come to know Jesus Christ. Come to know him intimately, personally, right? If you're mm-hmm. Catholic, right? Get to mass, get praying there, go to adoration, pray the rosary, do these things, but especially contemplative prayer. Learn how to sit in silence. We have a culture that is a culture of noise that's trying to steal the ability to come in touch with these deep, deep um, desires. And but and before those deep desires are there, there may be an ache, there may be pain here. And we may be, a lot of our clients that we work with in freedom coaching, they like to run stuff or ignore those uncomfortable emotions. And what that's pointing to is often, oftentimes for a lot of us, we've got trauma. Jesus Christ is the one who ultimately can heal that, but you may need a medium, a medium in the right sense of the word, not a, please don't go to a, a sure, sure. or a tarot card reader. <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. But, but like a counselor, a coach, who's able to work through those um, and help with healing, right? So that the first is like, we've got to work with our own wounds. And, and obviously there's always going to be more to work on, of course. Second is look at your vocation. What vocation are you in? If you're single, then obviously developing your skills and to, to quote Sarah Swafford, um, who said the best advice he, she ever got was in confession where she was discer- kind of discerning her vocation, where she, the priest just said, Sarah, run. Start running, start developing your skills, your talents, your gifts. You were created for some purpose here on earth to do good work. And as you're running, then you, and, and as you get into a kind of a good pace, then start looking around, right? Start looking around and see who might be running with you. And that might be your life running partner. Okay. I think this is important because t- too many young people get caught up in like, especially the Instagram and the Facebook and Twitter and, and I don't know, Tinder or hopefully like Tinder, Tinder, but uh, Snapchat and all these social media right. where I've got to look a certain way. I've got to be a certain way. I've got to have a certain flavor of the month right now or follow the certain flavor of the month instead of, no, again, coming back to your own identity and dignity, right? So you got to know that, right? But if you are, you know, your vocation, you really feel you're called to marriage. Are you preparing for that? Are you living that well? And then in your marriage, if you are married, are we striving to love as Christ loves? And I know, William, you and everyone, please pray for our marriage. I know I don't do this perfectly, right? I know that I hurt my wife with my things. And so we've got to learn a key word, and it's called forgiveness. And another key word, humility, humble, right? To know that we don't have all the answers, we don't have it all, but through God's grace coming together, learning to build this well. So obviously, this and this there's continue and there's lots of resources for marriage. And I do recommend to married couples, if you have not gone to a marriage coach or marriage counseling, right? I don't care how if you're you think your marriage is rocking awesome or it's not so awesome, get help. Okay. Get get a tune up, right? Say go on retreat. Something that can help to do this because many times we're so focused on our kids instead of about yep. our marriage. Right. And when the Definitely. kids leave I think the kids are going to leave. I hope they're going to leave some point. Please, God, please help them get a house. Leave on the right way. Right, right. I mean, I'm not kicking them out yet. Um, uh, <laughs> but within this, right, then those kids leave, though, and you got an empty nest kind of thing, right? So so you have that. And then, uh, obviously, you know, our, our time with our, our, our kids is so important. The, a simple, simple uh, suggestion, uh, solution to this, eat together. The family who eats together stays together. The family who prays together stays together. Father Patrick Payton is the one who who, uh, who I came. Anybody who doesn't know who that is, please check him out. Um, and anyway, uh, like, so doing those different things, creating the environment for intimacy. We're, we're at a, a dearth of intimacy. And I think, um, uh, William, this, this circles back to our, our conversation in the beginning of this with the, 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 the C-19 um, pandemic, right? Being out here and, and totally keeping us locked inside. And I think people are still afraid. And what it's done, it's created this environment of a dearth of intimacy. And our children are to suffer, are suffering for this. So what we have to do is we as parents, we got to work even more fiercely to protect that notion, but also know also what is the home life of their kids, that they, they, they're, they're the neighborhood kids that they hang out with, their friends they hang out with, right? Which is it's an exhausting job, man. I'm, I'm not, I am not perfect at this by any means, right? But getting our eye on the ball is really critically key. And then the fourth piece I would say, on some level, right, find a good church community that you can be a part of, right? If there's funny business, silly stuff going on in church, get out of that place. Go find a church where you can, you can worship in, where, uh, you know, where Jesus Christ is King, where it's faithful to the sacraments, faithful to the true magisterium and helping us to grow 
in holiness, right? Uh, is your pastor challenging on those things, right? And that, that is a, a tall order for many places. It might mean that we need to drive several places. It might mean, you know, if I know that some people like to go to the traditional Latin mass. I'm Byzantine Catholic. We've got a, a small but mighty growing community um, and, and really look working to, to support each other through this. And, but then also on this, on this issue of pornography, we got to talk about it bring it out. And, you know, we have lots of resources. Freedom, freedom coaching uh, is one of those resources, redeeming our vision or um, the, the series, redeeming our vision.com. And also the book redeemed vision. Um, highly, highly recommend taking a look at these, but again, uh, it's time to get aware and get educated and take action. One more question. I'll let you go Steve. And you touched on it a second ago. Why with porn being such a billion dollar industry, I mean, unfortunately, and it's out there. Why are we so afraid to talk about it? Wounds, William. Wounds, okay. right? I think we have, um, and, and that, and then that un- opens up a lot of elements, right? A lot of, a lot of areas we can we can jump into. Um, and very briefly, is you know how many of our again, how many of our families, how many of our parents ever really talked about this stuff? They didn't because they were ashamed of right, some of the wounds. Right. There and then and going on here. I mean, we're talking we're talking about a, at least a hundred years of massive sexual wounds that was unleashed at least in the 1920s, if not earlier. Okay, and and so this is this has become commonplace. And then and then many of us also, I mean, we make excuses. We think that our kids will be fine. The kids are resilient, right? And as long as I um, just safeguard them and block their technology, then they'll be then they'll, they'll be safe. Well, they're going to go out of the world someday. And if we don't aren't having an explicit, not explicit in the sense of a holistic understanding of the truth about sexuality, age appropriately through like what the church teaches in the document, the truth and meaning of human sexuality, right? Which is, which is, um, you know, uh, builds upon the work of theology, the body, I would argue, and traditional, the, the, the full truth of what the church has always taught on on human sexuality and, and, and love and marriage and vocational work, right? So, and I, I would say also, William, is we have a radically, radically under-catechized um, uh, populace in the Catholic mm-hmm. Church. People don't, they just don't know. And they're not hearing from their parish. Encyclicals are not talked about um, in many cases, especially the encyclicals that were come out from came out from John Paul and Benedict. And so these things need to be rediscovered. So there's a there's an old um, I forget I don't know if it's Kellogg yeah Kellogg's cold uh, Kellogg's cornflakes that said taste them again for the first time. So maybe we need to taste Catholicism for the first time. And most importantly, I would say, you know, one of the answers is we've got to make Catholicism weird again, right? Go out and pray in public. Start talking to people about these things, right? What is like? Did you know the people that were really important in our in our faith? We like to take their bodies and cut them up into little pieces and pass them around the globe. Okay, all right. That's weird. What what's that all about? Tell me more about that, right? If anybody doesn't know what I'm talking about, we're talking about relics here, people. Not they're 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 not live. They're dead. Okay, <laughs> so we're not we're not like that. But we do we do eat and drink uh, flesh and blood. We're cannibals, right? No, Jesus Christ is alive. We're not eating dead flesh, right? So those kind of things need to be brought out here and we need to get educated. So a simple way to start this, not to overwhelm anyone, learn something. So, and and I would say get educated about the pornified culture and how we can actually solve it, of which um, there's a lot of resources here with uh, with Redeemed Vision and uh, Redeeming Our Vision. Great. Now, Steve, what's your website and how can people get a hold of you if they need to reach out? Awesome. So uh, freedom-coaching.net is the website, Instagram, LinkedIn, f- Facebook. Uh, if you're, The handle is Redeemed Vision on there. Uh, you can shoot us a message right through, uh, through the website and I'll get it. And then I'll be happy to respond to you. Great. Now, thank you for coming on. I know we talked a lot of a lot of different topics, which is, w- which was fun, but <laughs> it was fun. But thank you for coming on and I uh, wish you the Thank you for all you're doing for people out there. It's I, I see those testimonials and they're fantastic. William, so thank you. Thank you so much. An mm-hmm. honor and honor to serve and blessings on you and your ministry and all those who are hearing this. All right. Thank you. God bless. God bless.